Well, I started sensing some things in my hotel room. God's dispatching more angels to this local church for the purpose of miracle power. I tell you something is happening in Hobbs, New Mexico right now. I can see it right now. It's happening. This it's a miracle taking place. They from Hobbs, New Mexico. There's a miracle happening. There's a miracle happening in Hobbs. Amen. I want to give you uh, give you uh, about three statements here. I want you to uh, want you to write down, and then we're just going to look at a few verses and uh, call it a day. Well, actually, we're not going to call it a day. We're going to call it this part of the day. Yeah. Amen. And then we'll move forward to the part of the day that has not yet <laughs> arrived. Amen. It will be a different part of the day, but it will be actually connected to this part. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't we have a bunch of wonderful young men and young women? I'm so stinking excited about that. You have got one right here in the front row. Glory to God. Praise God. Stays awake most of the time. <laughs> Tell somebody, I told somebody once, I said, wake that person up next to you. And they said, you come and wake them up. You put them to sleep. How rude is that? They always blame the pastor. They always blame. I don't care. I mean, if you want to come here and sleep, this is a safe place to sleep. You won't get run over here probably. And, you know. Won't be any dirty needles on the, you know, by the chair next to you that you could rub up against. I mean, it's a safe place. huh? And you could wake up every once in a while and get something. Huh? Because the Word's powerful. You know, we always play the Word at night. We play the Word at night. I mean, because, you know, the Word is spirit. Huh? I mean, if you're so, you know, if you're such a light sleeper, then, you know, I'd get over that. But hallelujah. Praise God. Where did I say I was going to give you some statements? Number one, God's Word tells you how he sees you, but you make it happen. God's word tells you how he sees you. This will help you understand uh, being in agreement with the word of God. God's word tells you how he sees you, but you make it happen. Isn't it amazing that God loves us so much, but he left everything that meant anything up to us? Absolutely our choice. I mean, don't you know, by virtue of him being God, he could have, he could have just made puppets out of all of us. And he could have told Jesus and the Holy Ghost, you know, let's just pretend they really love us. Couldn't he? I mean, he's God. He could have done whatever he wanted to do. He made the rules. He set this up. And he wanted to do it all for us so that those that wanted it could have it. I'm going to tell you, that's love right there. That's love right there. This is what we've done for you. Take it or leave it. This has all been paid for. It's up to you. I mean, you would think we'd be on that like duck on a June bug, wouldn't you? Or white on rice. Unless it's brown rice. <laughs> or like brown on brown rice. You would think that that's too good to be true. Well, that must be what almost everybody thinks. Because not many people make it their truth. 
And the only way it'll work is when we make it our truth. Praise God. So again, what did he say? What did that statement say? Somebody help me. God's Word tells you how He sees you, but you make it happen. Put it in your heart and in your mouth. Put it in your heart and in your mouth. Makes it simple. Now this one right here, this is kind of a play on words here. Until you're no to becomes your want to, it won't become your do do. Now, <laughs> now that <laughs> that really doesn't that really doesn't focus on do do. It's do. Maybe I should have put do comma do. Until you. Until you're no to. In other words, you say you know what you know. But until what you say you know becomes what you want to do, your do won't do. Until your no to becomes your want to, it won't become your do do. Or <laughs> that's funny anyway. Do do, that's a funny way to say it, you know? That's why I like the S word better. This is do, do do. Do do is just too, do do is just too cute. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to stimulate a few, you know something? There are so many things that you can tie with that other word that are hilarious. I mean, they're hilarious. I don't care who you are. I don't care how saved you are or how long you've been saved. They're hilarious, okay? Now, I'm not saying that they're suitable or that they should be said or whatever. I'm just saying they're hilarious. Huh? Man, I'm thinking about a couple of them right now. We could bring the house down. And maybe if PK heard me, she would bring me down. <laughs> Let's look at it again. Put it up there for me. Until you know to, until you know to, becomes your want to. So it's like believing in one hand. Oh, if you thought I was going on with that and put, <laughs> putting myself in a compromising position where I, where I would, I don't ever trip up and say anything, okay? Let me just go ahead and fess up to it. If I ever say it, it's because I chose to say it, okay? And the reason I'm telling you that is because he will know that I chose to say it. I didn't say I got his permission. I said I chose to say it. Until your no to becomes your want to. You got to want to. It won't become your do do. You got to want to do what you know. You got to want to do what you know. You got to want to do it. So I was visiting with a family member the other day and they were, they were trying to uh, encourage me to help you want to. <laughs> Not that please. Are you serious? 
Do you not know that the creator of the universe can't make you want to. Not only can't, won't make you want to. All he does is present what's available. And then your no to in order to be your doo-doo or your pretty garden has to be your want to. Who is it that eats the good of the, the land? The willing and the obedient. Why do they do that? Because they want to. Some of you tell me why you don't want to, even though you know to. Does anybody want to fess up to that? Just, just tell me, why don't you want to? Have you ever thought about that? You will be thinking about it. Maybe you ought to have this discussion with the Father. Father, what keeps me from wanting to do what I know will be beneficial to me for the rest of my life? Father, what is it that is missing in an opportunity to be free that inhibits me from wanting to experience freedom? So you all take some responsibility, would you? I don't know. I can't make you want to. I can't. I can't make you want to. I've got to work on me. And then every time I finish a service, I realize I've got to work harder. Bible believing is doing. Bible believing is doing. Don't tell me you believe something, but you don't do what actual believing is necessary from a action perspective. You can't say you can't say I believe in God and then not believe in what God has done for you. You can't say I believe God wants me to be whatever it is. But yet you don't do your part. Even if your only part is saying what you believe. Even if it's just saying, we know everything you believe starts with speaking. But speaking is really the first connection. We believe and we speak. After that, what do we do? We have to follow up with whatever else is necessary. You can't tell, you can't tell, you know, a farmer can't tell God, uh, you know, I've got 10 sections and I believe this is going to be the greatest year ever, but never sow any seed. So you can talk like you got something going for you. But you have to follow it up with whatever's next. Let's look here in James real quick, because this is a powerful, a powerful uh, uh, picture right here. James chapter 1. James is a great book. I encourage you to read it. It's so short, but it is so powerful. Hey, let me read these other verses to you first. I'll get you wired up. 
in chapter 4, beginning in verse 4. You adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that the friendship of the world is enmity with God or in opposition to God? Now, obviously, they just use the word adulterers and adulteresses here to get people's attention because what he's talking about here is the world meaning more to these people who professed Jesus as their Lord. But they were still focused on the things of the world. Oh, you get real quiet now. You may go back to the doo-doo or what do we need to do? What do we need to do here? I mean, I, I don't want to lose you. I mean, right here when we're getting close to the end and then all of a sudden, look at you. No, don't look at me. Look at you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity or in opposition with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Well, that's a pretty stinking important verse. So, you know, a friend of the world, a friend of the world, a friend of the world. That means what they do in the world. Remember, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So there should be a difference between how we think, what I say, so I don't say the S word. I mean, I don't say that that's the end of the world or, you know, that's, a, uh, that's got a straight shot to hell or anything. I'm not saying that. Okay, just relax. I'm just saying if you're still comfortable doing what you did prior to you having received Jesus, Let's say you've still got to have a little weed every once in a while. Maybe you are having a challenge jumping on somebody's bones that doesn't belong to you. I'm just saying if there are things like that, huh? you could have a world connection right there that casts dispersions on your supposed... Christian connections. Here come Jaws. Here come the Jaws. Does that make sense? You wish I'd have started with that other set of verses, don't you? No, you're, you're glad I started here. Because, you know, we got to be right. We got to be right. We, we want to help people get right. That doesn't mean we point our bony finger at somebody. You are a... Mm-mm. No. no, we understand. We've been delivered. We've been set free. But we also know that the only way that Mario can be free is if we present what freedom really is to him. You know what I mean? So he can make the same decision that we made. Do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy, speaking of the Holy Ghost, but he gives more grace, wherefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. See, when, when, when you're right in your knower, in your heart, then you're not going to be proud and resistant and arrogant. You're going to realize, I can't, I can't live like this anymore. I don't want to live like this anymore. It was killing me then. And it's still killing me. And I'm supposed to have stepped into life. Mm -hmm. That's why we, that's why we don't, we don't get upset when we hear things 
again, anything that you hear from the Word of God is designed to take you further. Not to kick you to the curb. To help you. You know, God knows that, that if we're not right in our heart and we're not right in our thinking, it will keep us from the success that the Lord Jesus paid for. So none of his, none of his stuff comes with, uh, uh, with condemnation. He, he died for you before you were even yeah. worth dying for. So this is not about his being ugly. No, he says right here, he gives more grace to the yes, humble. That's right. All we have to do as individuals is personally uh, ask for his forgiveness. And then he'll not only forgive us and move us forward, he'll empower us to resist getting back in that same mess. You know, he'll give you a holy, righteous indign indignation. Yeah. And, and instead of, uh, instead of it eating your lunch for the rest of your life, it'll be something like he did for me. I just expose it. I just confidently expose it. Hey, listen. If this is what you're doing, it's wrong. Don't think for a minute that it's going to get right any other way than you making a decision. I want it to be right. I want my relationship with him to be right. Down to every detail. Because I do, I understand that he knows every thought. Well, if that's the case, then there isn't any reason why I'd be harboring anything or allowing anything to keep me right. from being open Good. and humble yes. in his person. Mm -hmm. And see, he's not like man. Mm -hmm. He's not going to rag on you. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to remind you. Yeah. He's not going to tell you. He's going to continue to reveal himself to you, which is all of the want to we really need to do our part. Our part's really flimsy. Our most challenging part is just wanting to do it. You can't change somebody's want to. Only the individual. Hmm? You don't stop doing what's wrong until you want to. Well, I just, you know, I just... I guess I'm dependent on this. No, this is what you want to do. Yeah. Come on. Call a spade a spade. Yeah. Yeah. Good. This is what you want to do. You now believe it's something that you have to do. But it's not. That's, right. That's a lie. Yeah. You don't have to do, you don't have to want to do anything that you don't want to do. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They probably didn't want to go to the furnace. But they also wouldn't break their covenant with God. Well, you know, they're just they're just addicted. Yeah, I was addicted to some things too. I sure was. I mean, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I was addicted to it. I did it all the time. I was invisible for 15 years. Don't even remember the years. May have been more than that. If you don't remember 15, you probably don't remember 20. Yeah, don't even remember them. Don't remember who, when, where, why. How much or how many? Don't even remember it. But just like that, right. you're stopped. Hallelujah. I don't know how many straight nights I went to bed not in my right mind. 
But in one moment, yes. threw what was left away and walked away. And I was not a strong person. People say, well, you were just strong enough to do that. No, I chose to do it. When you want to do something, that's what you'll do. And listen, don't be afraid to stop doing what you've been doing just because you've been doing it too long. Don't think that there's not a real life on the other side of what you've been doing because there is. And no devil in hell can keep you from living that life if you'll simply get in agreement with God's word, huh? I don't care how desperate you believe you need a warm body beside you. You can do this because it's what God's plan requires of you. Your body is not your Lord if Jesus is your Lord. Your body does not belong to you if you actually see yourself as belonging to God. So you need to be sure that your no to becomes your want to. Or it'll be The susu. <laughs> the world's jacked up. And there's no reason for you to mirror the world. None whatsoever. Quick verses. I'll be done when I want her to be. Maybe not when you wanted me to be, but I guess we could put in a suggestion box or something. And I can tell you a good place to put the suggestion box. Oh, me. There would probably be people that would that would question this actually being a real church, you know. But that's, that's their issue because they don't know what a real church is. But be ye, James chapter 1, but be ye, verse 22, but be ye, or, but you be, doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Well, here I go again, saying something very similar. That verse is huge. <laughs> I mean, it is so stinking huge. Just think about that. We don't have much time, so don't think real long. But just think with me real quick. So, if you know to do the Word, and you don't do it, what you're encouraged to do is to be a doer of the Word, then you're deceiving your own self. Well, you know, we couldn't put our finger on a number, but can you imagine the number of people that sat in church today? Maybe some here, maybe others in other places, who are totally living in self-deception. And just remember, there's no deception like self-deception. It's one thing to, to be deceived by somebody else, but it's a whole other level for you to allow yourself to deceive yourself, especially when you're having a conversation about your, what you're fitting to do. 
that's fitting to put you in a deeper deception. And you agree with it and go along with it. There's no deception. For a believing believer to not be a doer is deadly. Because you can actually get yourself in a position where you feel you're good. I'm good. I show up. I picked up my PFS one month. (laughs) Or whatever. It doesn't make any difference what it is. Be a doer of the word. For any, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who checks himself out in a mirror. For he checks himself out and then goes away and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty or freedom. You look in here and you see the freedom that's available to you. Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And, er, uh, yeah. Oh, man, that's powerful. but keeps going on like he's out here instead of in here. This man who's a forgetful hearer but a, but a doer of the work, that man shall be blessed in his deed. When you're not a doer, When you're not a doer, you're the same as you were. And if you think you're any different, you're deceiving yourself. I don't care. You could walk this aisle till the carpet wore out. Huh? You could cry a river every service. You could repent until hell froze over and the devil went ice skating on it. And you'd still be self-deceived. Until you're a doer. You'll never experience the freedom that only comes from being a doer. Huh? Don't count on a faith accident. Your life can be on purpose. You can go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. You can experience victory in your life. But, but be mindful that that's reserved for the doers, yes. not the players. Yes. No players allowed. <laughs> no great pretenders. No much doers. Yes. You got to be a doer. Yes. No doey. No giddy. Do we right? Giddy right. right. Duh. I mean, honestly, that's just a big duh in all caps. Isn't it? It's just... So, you know... If somebody wants to give me 12 steps to help believers be doers, I'll consider running it by the people. Actually, it's not a, it's not a 12 step program. It's a one step program. It's called loving God with all your heart. And when you love him with all your heart, 
He'll reveal to you what needs to go and how to get rid of it.